Welcome to Mines of Money, EME Americas Online. My name is Michael McRae, Mining Audiences Manager here at Kitco. You're watching the session, Mining Investment Opportunities, and we have with us Gord Stothart. He is President and CEO of IM Gold. Welcome, Gord. Thanks very much, Michael. Very glad to be here. And uh, I guess it's it's good morning for you and I, and good good afternoon for everybody over across the pond. Yes, indeed. Uh, I am Gold is an intermediate gold producer uh, with uh, operating mines in North America, South America, and Africa, with annual production on an average year of around eight hundred thousand. Uh, I am Gold is uniquely situated for this talk about uh, mining investment because of all of the important issues regarding geopolitical risks, ESG, and then also understanding the junior proposition. Gord, uh, we're going to get into broader themes, but uh, firstly, I just want to keep it at I am Gold for a sec. It's just because uh, you broke a little news this week. Can you talk about what happened at Cote and what it means for I am Gold? Yeah, so we announced uh, on Monday morning that uh, we had received uh, what's called the uh, it's it's the Fisheries Act Schedule 36, sorry, uh, Section 36 Schedule 2 uh, permit or authorization. It's one of the key authorizations for opening a, a metal mine in, in uh, Canada. Uh, it's a federal permit. And uh, as I said, we received it about a week ago. And, and it's 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 a key announcement for us. Uh, prior to this, we had been um, uh, basically communicating that we were looking at, we have two shovel, shovel ready projects, but we were in the process of deciding which, which one of those was going to take priority. And as part of the announcement uh, for Cote, we, we, we uh, declared that in fact, Cote will be going first. Our Bodo mine in, in Senegal uh, will continue to do de-risking work on it, but uh, we won't enter into construction in both of them at the same time. Uh, sort of the next step for Cote uh, sometime over the next couple of months is work with our partner Sumitomo Metal Mining in Japan uh, to reach a, a formal construction decision and then uh, very much look forward to executing on that project. It'll make a big difference for our company. Can you talk about uh, when that might be online and uh, what uh, estimated production would be? So assuming we can make a construction decision here in the next couple of months um, in order to to obviously deal with the COVID situation, we sort of anticipate we would, we could start construction uh, fully, uh, probably in about Q4. Uh, and assuming we can make a Q4 uh, construction decision, it would be about mid 2023 when we come into production. Uh, the first six years of production uh, on a hundred percent basis uh, would produce around 420,000 ounces annually. So our 7% shares is around 310, 320,000 ounces uh, over the first six years. Uh, life of mine, uh, our production, our, our attribution would be around 275,000 over the 18 year mine life that we currently have. And that mine is in North America, correct? Yep, mine is in Ontario. It's uh, situated approximately halfway between Sudbury and Timmins. So a uh, great mining part of the world. And it's it's only six kilometers off a major highway. So. From a logistics point of view, it's it's uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, and the other piece of news uh, is sticking with IM Gold operations. Uh, last month, uh, you exited a um, uh, you exited your Mali mine with uh, Angle Gold. Yeah, that the uh, the deal hasn't completely closed yet, but it's in the process of closing. And it you know it's a little bittersweet for IM Gold. That was the the founding asset of the company in in Sadiola. Uh, you know, we uh, the the I am Gold company as a junior found that uh, in the early '90s, and it really created the company. So it, it's a little sad to see it go. However, uh, we're really happy with the the Allied Group and and uh, uh, hopeful for the for the workforce there that they do a great job of carrying it forward. Let's uh, talk about uh, COVID nineteen. Can you talk about uh, what the impact has been on uh, the uh, what we're guessing is coming up quickly is going to be on the Q two, and then uh, what that's going to be meaning to uh, production? Yeah, so we we revised our guidance at the end of Q one downward slightly. Our current guidance, I think, is uh, six eighty five to to seven forty. Twenty twenty was always going to be a bit of a lower year for us, uh, and as we go forward, we'll build, and obviously as we build Cote. Uh, we'll build very quickly. But uh, for this year, the, you know, every, each of our operations has had a, a different impact. Uh, the Westwood mine in, in Quebec uh, was closed for about three and a half weeks uh, due to a government uh, mandated shutdown of all the mines. 
at the end of March and, and through the middle of April. Um, it's reopened since and is, it is really operating quite well and, and uh, a lot of new protocols in place, but the, the, the team there has adapted. Our, uh, uh, our Rosabelle mine in, in Suriname in South America had been going uh, very, very well and Suriname as, as a country had done very well with COVID up until sort of the end of May. Uh, for a number of reasons, uh, partly their proximity to to uh, Brazil and and I think uh, le lessening of of some of the the uh, uh, the impacts in country or some of the controls in country, they they did start to see a bit of an outbreak. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we announced that we we had uh, suspended operation at Rosabel for 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 a couple of weeks. Uh, we're still just in the process of working through quarantine with our our individuals there. Uh, and managing the situation and our expectation here within the next little while we'll be able to, to restart that operation and the rest of the year looks great there. Uh, we just opened our new um, Saramaca pit about 25 kilometers away. Uh, we made the road connection through to Saramaca at the end of Q1 and, and we were in the process of ramping up. So we're eager to get back to that. Uh, and the future is, is, uh, is good for, for Rosabelle both in terms of production and costs as we move out through the five-year plan. We just need to get through this, this current situation, make sure our people are all safe and healthy and, and then get back at it. And at our Essican mine in, in, uh, in Burkina Faso, uh, they were somewhat impacted in Q2. They were probably running at around 80% capacity. Uh, at the end of the day, we had a crew that, that ended up um, uh, stuck at site for over two months uh, and started to get some fatigue and, and productivity challenges. Uh, the Burkina government about three weeks ago lifted uh, the administrative quarantine uh, in that area of the country. And since then we've resumed normal uh, shift changes and, and the results uh, as I look at, at uh, as I look through June really started to come up uh, through the, through the month. So uh, looking Forward to the to the second half of the year at, at Essican, uh, Burkina as a country has done actually quite well with with managing the issues. It's it's something you, you stay on top of. You know we've got a three tier crisis uh, response uh, process in place, trying to manage the situation and and uh, it's it's a little bit of a game of whack a mole. Things pop up and you gotta you gotta jump on them and and uh, and do the appropriate things. Uh, stepping back and then looking at uh, the gold uh, industry and as we get closer into Q2, um, you know, it seems like a real variety in terms of uh, what the gold production outputs are going to be uh, per the impact. Do you have a feel? Is it going to be people are going to be quite surprised overall with the outputs of the seniors as well as the intermediates uh, in terms of what the gold shortfall will be? Or do you think that people have been able to adjust? You know, I, I think it's going to be spotty. Some some people will be impacted. Um, if we hadn't had the issue at Rosabelle, we would have come through the quarter uh, in pretty good shape. Uh, we will obviously be, be a little bit impacted and we'll need to review what our guidance looks like for the full year. You know, I've heard from, from some of our peers, some of them are being impacted. I think the majority of them have been able to adapt. And uh, I think overall, uh, I don't know if we'll see surprises to the upside. I'm sure there'll be a few surprises to the upside, but I also believe there'll be a few uh, a few producers that will have had their challenges and are working through them right now. It's uh, it's a bit hit and miss as you look around the world, obviously, uh, and it'll be intriguing to see uh, what the numbers actually come up like. You've got a diversified portfolio at the top. I mentioned because of uh, North America, South America, as well as Africa that you have there. It's a big question, Gord, uh, uh, for for this uh, time of the morning for us. But uh, can you? It is a mining investment panel. Can you talk a little bit about uh, community stakeholder relations, kind of in each of these? How do you uh, thumbnail it uh, because of uh, the diverse places uh, that you operate? And that might be as you're somebody that would be a perspective, kind of looking into the industry. Um, I, you know, internally we've had a, a, a vision we call the zero harm vision for over a dozen years and, and um, our relationship with our host communities is a big part of that. Uh, we take that part of our business very, very seriously. Uh, it's, it's invariably managed through dialogue, uh, uh, regular uh, open dialogue, being transparent, being honest about uh, what you need as a company and, and and what is what is practical for us to help the communities with? 
the vision is obviously uh, as we go through the process uh, of mining uh, that we create something within the community that, that uh, exists beyond the life of the mine. So what sort of development, what sort of uh, uh, skills, what sort of, what sort of regional uh, growth we can actually uh, foment through, through, our, through our actions as, as, we, as we operate the mine. As you say, it's, it's quite different in each of the areas we operate in. Um, but that being said, if you stick to those kind of principles, it, it works well. In, in, in West Africa, uh, in Burkina Faso and, and around Mali, um, you know, communities within the region, a fair number of, of uh, direct jobs uh, within the region. Uh, at Essican, um, in 2018, we opened uh, a 15 megawatt solar plant uh, that will carry through to the end of the life. Uh, but beyond the life of the mine, that solar plant will remain behind uh, and, and supply power to the, to, to the community. And it's quite large. We're also working um, on a program uh, with the Canadian government and with a, a uh, a couple of uh, other NGOs, uh, One Drop Foundation and, and uh, a Coal Water, to uh, bring water to that part of the world. The Sahel is obviously a pretty uh, arid place. So uh, the program to, to, to be able to bring potable water to about 200,000 people, those are the kind of programs that really will, will survive past the operation. Uh, in Suriname, uh, we've got the Rosabel Foundation that we're working on, again, trying to find uh, avenues, uh, typically through agriculture, but also through light manufacturing, things that the communities can do. Um, in, uh, in Canada, we're, we're a very involved member of the community. Uh, we work uh, with First Nations as well as the communities uh, that surround us, tend to do a lot more on support of education and, and medical uh, facilities, uh, both in in Ontario and Quebec, uh, th that's sort of the gist of our programs. And with Cote coming on, uh, a lot of work over the past years, working with our, our First Nations partners in the area uh, to find ways for them to participate that 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 construction and later that operation will bring to the region uh, in a meaningful way. Uh, you know, through generating business for them, through generating employment for them, and obviously working at, at, at other pieces of it. Again, just to develop the communities to share in, 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 in the wealth that's created through the, through the mining operation. I assume you're somebody that is going to work with a new miner in a new jurisdiction and uh, you're either going to partner with them or potentially look mm -hmm. at an investment with them. How would you thumbnail those same criteria looking at community stakeholder relations as uh, being something that you would, how, how could you actually kind of quantify that if you were looking at somebody that you wanted to work with for the first time? Well, I, it's a great question. And you know what, what we talk about internally for ourselves, um, community relations starts when the first geologist walks on the property. Um, and you really need to look at how people run their, their exploration uh, uh, programs, how they start with community relations, how they interact. You know, you can always, as, as a company with, with some broad experience in that area, there's always improvements you can do, um, but you really want to make sure that, that uh, there isn't an ant antagonistic uh, relationship or, or an isolationist relationship, because both of those uh, can lead to, to a lot of problems down the road. Uh, I think that uh, I think that's a good place to leave it there, Gordon. I, okay. I see that our moderators are uh, are waiting frantically. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Gordon. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I've been yeah. speaking with uh, Gordon uh, Stothart. Uh, Gord Stothart. Uh, he's president and CEO of I Am Gold.